So this Gigafactory in Arizona that he's just started. We get a huge number of different customers through our doors, ranging from the extreme motorsport sort of companies through to mainstream manufacturers such as Jaguar Land Rover, Nissan and so on. So you can imagine with a huge range of customers, there's a huge range of different requirements in terms of testing and characterization. If you look at this ink, this ink is really nice consistency. It's glossy, it's homogeneous, it pours really well, which means that when we coat it on our coaters downstairs, this will give us a really nice consistent electrode. The coating machine is the first step. We apply the ink onto the foil and we dry it. And then it comes to this machine here, which is a calendaring machine. So essentially we squash down the material, we reduce the porosity, and that's how we kind of decide whether we want a high power cell or high energy cell. So, so do we want to go very far or do we want to get there very quickly? If we're talking about a high power battery, a high performance battery, we try to get like a very high currents out of the battery. So the current collector, so the metal foil, actually needs to be slightly thicker so it doesn't overheat. And consequentially, we go for our th films, the electrode ink, much lower, much like thinner, pretty much, just to get you know much better thermal conductivity and to much get the electrons out much quicker. The, the lithium ions. When we're talking about high, long range, high energy cell. We're trying to get as much ink as possible onto each individual sheet of copper or aluminium. And the sheets of copper and aluminium can be much, much thinner because we don't require these high currents. We're constantly looking at newer technologies, so we're looking at different chemistries, so sodium ion batteries, lithium sulfur batteries, aluminium, potassium, calcium batteries. You can imagine around the globe there's lots and lots of laboratories looking at different chemical recipes. What we would envisage in the future is a combination of an electric vehicle with its electric battery combined with a fuel cell acting as what's called a range extender. So you've got a, an electric vehicle that produces no emissions. When the battery gets a little bit depleted, the fuel cell would then recharge the battery and in operating the fuel cell produces no pollutants and so on. At the moment fuel cell technology in terms of a fully hydrogen powered fuel cell vehicle is several years away yet.
that application takes us right to the limits of what is achievable within motorsport. At the moment we are testing the individual cells, but hopefully within the next year or two you'll see that technology getting through into a battery that we actually see out on the racetrack. While you're parked at the lights, waiting for the lights to change to green, your vehicle will be picking up energy from the road, or similarly when you're parked at home in your driveway or in your garage. So in order to take uh, advantage of those opportunities to charge, the battery pack has got to be able to receive a lot of power very quickly. So ultimately our aiming point is a battery pack, uh, an electric vehicle, where you never have to plug in your electric vehicle. You can pick up sufficient charge as you're driving in your day-to-day -day activities that you'll never need to plug in ever again.